how do corals reproduce and the key concepts of coral reef ecology. Corals have many strategies for reproducing which are highly variable and complex. Corals reproduce both asexually and sexually. The following will explain and show how the corals reproduce asexually and sexually. The first one is asexual reproduction. Some corals reproduce asexually in a process called bonding, in which the pairing polyp divides into an exact genetic replica of itself. As new polyps are added, a coral colony develops. The figure below shows how coral bonding works. Moreover, a video will be shown for you to be more illuminated regarding coral budding. It's budding. When a mature coral polyp reaches a certain size, it starts to divide. First elongating, then forming two mouths, and finally separating into two polyps. This process is called budding. It continues throughout the coral colony's life. Constant addition of new polyps allows corals to grow, creating the foundation of the reef. Another type of asexual reproduction is called fragmentation, in which pieces or fragments of coral colony are broken off and distributed by currents and waves. If the fragment settles on solid bottom, it may fuse right there and continue to grow asexually through budding. Storms and hurricanes can trigger another kind of asexual reproduction, called fragmentation. When corals are broken, they can reattach, just like some plants do, and grow into a new coral colony. Aside from asexual reproduction, the other one is sexual reproduction. About three quarters of coral species are hermaphrodites, meaning that they are both male and female. In one colony produces both eggs and sperm. The remaining quarter of coral species have separate male and female colonies that produce eggs and sperm separately. Sexual reproduction can happen in two ways. The sperm swims into the mouth of polyp containing an egg and fertilizes it internally. The young polyp, or called planular larva, then matures within the polyp in a process known as the first one, brooding. Brooding. Male corals. occurs inside the female. The planulae exit through the coral's mouth when they're mature, so they can settle sooner. With less distance to travel, planulae created by brooding are less likely to be eaten. Most coral species, or its 75%, reproduce by the second one called coral spawning, in which the polyps eject both eggs and sperm into the sea for external fertilization. Extraordinarily, in some areas of the world, Mass coral spawning events occur on the same night once a year, as millions of gametes or eggs and sperms are released into the water. With such a high concentration of gametes in the water, the threat of predators is reduced for each individual. Scientists believe this synchronicity is influenced by the moon, water temperature, and biological factors involving chemicals in the water column. At spawning, Male and female gametes combine and form a free-floating planula, or coral larva. Tiny planulae can drift for weeks in ocean currents before settling on a hard surface, like rocks, and developing into the corals that make up a reef. The life of the planula larva. Once the egg is fertilized, a new individual is created called planula larva. It is naturally attracted to the light and swims to the surface of water where it remains for several days up to several weeks. The planula larva eventually returns to the bottom of the ocean floor, and if conditions are favorable, it attaches to a hard surface or substrate and starts a new coral colony. Furthermore, planula larvae can travel long distances driven by winds and currents. This means that a coral in one part of the world can produce a new coral in another part of the world. 
this greatly affects fish species distribution and has important implications for Marine Protected Area or MPA managers when setting up network of marine reserves. Sexual and asexual reproduction have given corals a brilliant assortment of techniques to ensure that they survive from one generation to the next. That's good news for the multitude of ocean animals that make coral reefs their home. Coral Reef Ecology Coral reefs are one of the most diverse and productive ecosystems on the planet. Here are the key concepts of a coral reef ecology. The first one is ecology, followed by ecosystem, habitat, then community, next is population, organism, and lastly, the biodiversity. Ecology, the study of interaction among and between organisms and their environment. In the study of abundance and distribution of those organisms, ecologists are fascinated by coral reefs as they are one of the most diverse and productive ecosystems on the planet. Next is ecosystem. The combination of living or biotic organisms such as fish, algae, and zooplankton and non-living or abiotic conditions such as rain, salinity, and sunlight that make up a particular environment and make it unique. Coral reefs are one type of ecosystem. Other related coastal ecosystems are seagrasses and mangrove forests. Habitat, the specific location where a plant or animal lives. For example, the habitat of a particular species of flounder might be sand, coral rubble, and seagrass areas near patch reefs. Then, community. All the plant and animal species that live together in a particular habitat. For example, all of the cardinal fish, lobster, and shrimp that occupy a cave are part of the same community. Population. All the members of one species in a habitat, therefore you might refer to a population of shrimp or a population of frogfish. Followed by organism, any living thing that is composed of one or more cells. And lastly, the biodiversity, the total diversity of living things and of the ecosystems of which they are a part. This includes genetic variability among individuals within each species or genetic diversity the diversity of different species, and the variety of ecosystem. At least 11% of the world's reefs qualify as biodiversity hotspots or areas of high species uniqueness and diversity that have already been significantly impacted by humans.